This is the second video in my series about what ambient artists can learn from mixing other genres of music. In this video, we're going to be looking at hip hop. Hey, it's Marcus from Hello Sweet. Now I know what you're thinking. Rock was a little bit of a stretch, but yeah, maybe post rock sounds quite a lot like ambient, but hip hop couldn't be any further from ambient. And yes, you'd be right. Although that does make me wonder whether there's any such thing as ambient hip hop. If anyone knows of any artists that do ambient hip hop, let me know in the comments. I'm really keen to check them out. But regardless, there's still a lot that we can learn and adapt from this style of music. And I've got four techniques to share with you today. If you're new to the channel and you haven't had a chance to check out the free resources section of my website, do yourself a favor and check the links in the description. And if you're interested with working with me, you can request a free master sample or you can just put in a general inquiry. That's all in the links in the description. Check them out. Rightio, let's get into it. Number one, sample layering. Hip hop artists will often layer their samples to make them sound beefier. If you're taking something from a record, they're gonna sound pretty thin compared to the kind of big 808s or big synths that most modern artists will use. So we wanna add layers to make it sound a lot thicker. If you use the same sample, it ends up with phase cancellation. So what most hip hop artists will do was that they will take the same kind of sample that sounds very similar, but each one will have a different strength in different parts of the EQ spectrum. So for example, they might have a very dull sounding kick that has a really big low end, and they might have a very tinny sounding kick that has a lot more in the top end, and they will put them together so that the resulting sample has the best of both of those sounds. So I hear you ask, how does this apply to ambient music? Well, I had an aha moment a while ago when I realized that this technique is basically the same as what Phil Spector used to create his wall of sound technique. Although in his case, he used tonal instruments instead of percussion. If you're not familiar with the wall of sound technique, basically it's where multiple instruments will all play the same notes at the same time to make a bigger and thicker sound compared to just one instrument playing it. So I adapted it to my own music by making multiple copies of the same drones and changing the synth patches for each one. Some of them with more energy in the low end, some of them with more energy in the mids, and some of them with more energy in the highs. So basically EQing more of the harmonics compared to the fundamental in some of the layers. And basically that gives me a sound palette where I can bring in these parts a small amount if I think it just needs a little bit more top end, or I can bring each one up in different parts across the stereo field to give a more beefier, fuller sound. It gives me so many different options to enhance a particular part in my mix. and I can automate them in and out to add more variation. Number two, sub bass layering. I use this one all the time. Sometimes it can be really tricky to get the really bottom end of a bass to pop out without the harmonics in the lower mids blowing out and making the mix sound muddy. So a trick that hip hop artists often use to combat this because they love that big fat bottom end is to make two bass layers. One carries the bass line, the melody, and the other is a sub bass layer. And the idea is that you can raise or lower each depending on how much sub you need, how much bottom end, or how much of the kind of top end of that bass sound that you want. The way I tend to use this is using a sine wave oscillator. So in my case, I love to use operator in Ableton. I will copy over the bass line and lower it by one or two octaves and then EQ really sharply to cut out just before the fundamental of the bass note in the main line. So that way they don't interfere with each other in the mix. So then if I need more bass, I can just turn up the sub. Number three, bass saturation. Hip hop bass is usually very fat in the low end, but it can often be quite thin in the mids area, which means that if you're listening on headphones that don't have that strong bass response, you may not be able to hear the bass very well. So a trick that is commonly used in hip hop music is to add some saturation to the top end of the bass, which allows it to pop out in that mids area. I tend to use this a lot in mastering to maximize capability across different listening systems.
and this will work on any instrument really. It doesn't have to just be bass. If you have something that's not popping out of the mix just enough, saturation will give you that little extra edge. It'll give you more harmonics higher up in the frequency spectrum so that you can hear it more clearly. Number four, parallel processing. The most popular kind of parallel processing in hip hop music is probably compression. Parallel compression or New York style compression is often used to make drums pop in the mix. They will do this by feeding a copy of the mix or sometimes the drums bus through a compressor, turning it up to crazy go nuts levels and then mixing it very gently back in with the original mix. But this can be used on pretty much any kind of processing that you could think of to add a little bit of something extra. This usually works best when you're using non-linear processing. So for example, distortion or saturation, anything where the waveform is changed. So for example, hip hop artists might use something like parallel distortion or parallel saturation on vocals to add a little bit more grit. One of the things I love to do in my mixes is to feed an instrument through a whole bunch of reverbs and distortions until it's this kind of giant, buzzy, crackly cloud, and then mix that very gently back in with the mix, which gives me a little bit more grit and a little bit more fullness. And if I really like it, sometimes I turn it right up and let it take over everything. Well, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm gonna keep making more series, but if there are any kinds of genres of music that you'd like to know about specifically, drop it in the comments and I'll see if I can come up with some tips. As always, please don't forget to check the links in the description. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe to the channel to support free content on ambient and experimental music. And over here, you'll find plenty of videos on producing, mixing and mastering ambient music. Until next time, keep making music. Cheers.